Cat. It's Maximus here. Enough electronic stuff. Getting back to regular old tools. This time with an Armstrong 12-918. This would be the 17-inch <laughs> breaker bar, even though you'd think it would be the 18-inch. It's actually advertised as a 17-inch. Pretty heavy duty. Armstrong tools are really known for industrial environments. They're a big competitor to Proto and industrial and government tool contracts. Uh, Armstrong's are the kind of tools that you would see uh, uh, at factories and processing plants and that type of stuff, along with Proto and their occasional snap-on, but that's what Armstrong is really known for. And this is one of their last models. What I mean by last models is Armstrong was bought out by this company, or the one that owns GearWrench, which would be Apex Tools. And now, um, a couple years ago, Armstrong sales just weren't enough, and they decide instead of continuing with their expensive forgings, they're just going to wind them down. And now when you go to Armstrong's website, it just forwards you to gear wrench. And so that's kind of the sad thing about it and why I wanted to make a video, because there's still lots of uh, new old stock. You can certainly find these breaker bars, I think, for around 50 bucks. I'd certainly do it, because it really is a super-duty breaker bar. Really nice contour grip handle with flats. I mean, it's flat up there, so it doesn't roll, but it's even less likely to roll <laughs> compared to the gear wrench. What they're <laughs> and that's the hilarity of it is you go to Armstrong's website because you may see this video and you say, Look at that great breaker bar. Oh, okay, well, I'll just get a gear wrench instead. The gear wrench is <laughs> doesn't even hold a candle. I mean, look at the amount of material in this Armstrong and the head of the Armstrong. It's actually a little thicker than the gear wrench. The Armstrong uses a 3 8 inch press fit pin. Uh, instead of a screw, and the, this is, it's much harder to deal with. That's why the modern manufacturers don't do it. Proto does. I don't know if this is actually the original anvil, because online it shows more of a squared off anvil. So this may have been replaced at some point. But the head and the forks are just super duty, super ultra thick. The beam of this bar is actually thicker than it is on this gear wrench. It's really just kind of hilarious because they're recommending an inferior product. This is truly a heavy-duty breaker bar. And even if we compare to a selection, I'm not going to compare to every breaker bar I have. I need to update my video on my breaker bar review and comparison. This Armstrong actually stands up to a variety of excellent brands. Here we have a uh, Proto. We can see that just so much more meat in the fork of this. Plus how well centered it is. It's actually pretty nice. We have a, an SK here. If we can get it to focus, this is an old Diamond Logo SK. The SK was pretty meaty. Old breaker bars, they used to just replace the whole thing. They used to actually just forge or roll form the cross pins into the breaker bar. So if you ever sheared the anvil, you would have to replace the whole tool. The SK is okay, but still, not as much meat as the Armstrong. Here we have a German-made Hosset. Hosset's kind of like the Proto or the, I don't know if they're the Snap-on of Germany, but they're a uh, big-time professional-grade tool company. Um, and this Hosset is pretty heavy-duty, but once again, doesn't stand up to the Armstrong. The closest is this old Williams. What is this? This is a uh, S41A. I think that's an S. Roll stamp isn't great. The Williams is similar. The Williams has... Pretty heavy duty fork, a lot of extra meat down around the fork area, but once again, not as much as the Armstrong. So that's kind of the review of this video. It's only a 17 inch breaker bar, uh, but it's about as super duty as they really got. And uh, I guess, you know, when you look at photos online, they don't really tell you uh, the whole story. And uh, really, speaking of the beam thickness, if I measure this Armstrong here, I'm getting uh, 680 thousandths. The gear wrench is, actually it's almost as big, but it's still, it's 654, not 680. It's smaller. The Williams, 580, 100 thousandths thinner on the Williams. The Hosset's pretty stout. 629, 630, still 50 thousandths thinner than the Armstrong. The SK. 625, so that's a 5 8. And then the Proto, the Protos have actually always been kind of thin, 550. And it's more they're kind of balanced for the length of the breaker bar, and you feel it flexing, and you're supposed to be able to say, Oh, I'm about to break it. But it, that's kind of my thing. I wish Proto did have a little bit thicker beams on their breaker bars. 
So anyway, that's my review of this Armstrong. It really is a super duty breaker bar. Um, one of the thickest that was made. I'm sure of it. This thing is unbelievable. It's bigger. I, <laughs> my icon was buried, but uh, it's thicker than that. Really, if you can find one of these for a reasonable price, I pick it up. This is probably about as heavy duty as you can get. The hardest thing is if an anvil fails and you have to hunt down one of those 3 8 uh, press fit pin anvils where the pin is in the anvil itself. Kind of like how Proto does it and how Williams does it. And that's where you would have to get replacement parts is probably from one of those companies. Anyway, just wanted to share a little video uh, talking about this Armstrong Breaker Bar. And of all the ones I owned, really pretty stoked about this thing. This thing is really just super duty. And I always do get excited when I find some kind of tool after owning a bunch of nice tools and saying, wow, uh, even more, it's an, up, it's an upgrade. It's like, wow, this breaker bar is, <laughs> is going to have less deflection and be heavier duty than all these others. And all these others are still great in their own right. They're just not quite as strong as this. The take back, this thing is heavy. For 17-inch breaker bar, this is <laughs> a really hefty item. And that's probably the only real crux to it. Other than that, it's a shame the gear run shut down Armstrong. Probably because they're going to have to start charging $100 plus for tools like this in order to continue to forge them in the United States. Anyway, I really appreciate everybody who's been watching and subscribing. And if you haven't subscribed, please do. Until next time, Caddis Maximus out.